Michael Eric Dyson, welcome mm -hmm. to American Black Journal and welcome yes, home to Michigan. Yeah, it's great to, uh, great to be here and great to be on with you. Yeah, how often do you get back to Detroit? Uh, pretty much, I preach a few times in the area, yeah. come back, visit family and the yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I wanna start with uh, sort of news of the moment. Let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about things that are, that are happening that remind us uh, of the racial inequality that, that, that still frames life in, in America. Mm -hmm. but, but I want to talk about it in terms of uh, the hope for integration. I think some of the things that we're seeing at Starbucks uh, uh, in Detroit with a young man knocking on a door uh, only to be right. met with a shotgun, mm -hmm. they speak to the danger of being black in a white space. Mm -hmm. And I think they raise the question about whether we should be trying to be safe as blacks in a white space or whether we should be retreating from those spaces because they have never been safe and they won't be. Right. Well, I, I think the ideal of a self-sustaining black society, a kind of black utopia, mm -hmm. it's great for Wakanda. <laughs> it the films, beautiful. right? It works. <laughs> right, right, right. Wakanda, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you know, it would be tough in the real spaces we occupied, not to intersect with, you know, white spaces. Now, when we sustained all black spaces, when mm -hmm. we were forced to, right. when segregation imposed edicts of restriction so that apartheid prevailed, white water fountain, black water fountain, black school, white school, black neighborhoods, white neighborhoods. Uh, we have de facto segregation. We have, you know, harshly imposed restraints upon people's mobility, mm -hmm. but that's not an ideal situation you know, when Mr. Gilbert comes in to the inner city, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a wash with cash and flush with ambition to retake the skyline of Detroit and so many of its buildings mm -hmm. and to re-territorialize the urban demography of a city like Detroit, then marginal people are pushed further out it used to be that suburbia was for white folk in Detroit, <laughs> the collar counties. Mm -hmm. When I lived through the riot of 1967, and even though that wasn't the only instigating factor, yeah. it was one that pushed them out, mm -hmm. that is white brothers and sisters to those collar counties, black people left in these urban enclaves, um, and now the opposite is occurring. Yeah. You know, white folk are people rushing are back into back. the city sure. and taking over space and the like. Um, and black people are being pushed out. So there's no safe and stable black space yeah. that we can occupy. And it becomes extremely important, therefore, for the spaces we are forced or asked to interact with, right, mm -hmm. uh, need to be more friendly. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't find other, like, black shops besides Starbucks, sure. where we won't be faced with that. Black schools, Yes, of course. The historically black college and university, Baychella made that apparent. Right. You know, Beyonce <laughs> probably did more to recruit people to Howard and Spelman and Morehouse than a bunch of United Negro right. College funds. She's a one woman Lou Rawls right. for 50 years. So, you know, we do need to nurture those spaces yeah. and contemplatively um, construct them so that we are shielding our children, our black churches, our black spaces, but yeah. even the black churches kind of sanctuary mm -hmm. was literally invaded when Obama was president and Jeremiah Wright mm -hmm. <laughs> had to be held to account for things that a lot of black prophetic preachers would say. Have said, sure. And, and, and have said, but now that you've got surveillance, white space intervening on black space, making it unsafe because it is now being, you know, fetishized or, mm -hmm. you know, criticized or it's being surveilled, mm -hmm. then, you know, it, it's very different. So in this age of social media yeah. with Instagram and everybody posting on Twitter and swiping right or left <laughs> on Tinder. It, it, it's, it's tough not to see us holistically integrated, right. even if we're physically uh, segregated. Uh, the, the body may be segregated, but the spaces we occupy mentally, psychologically, intellectually are not. So we, we, we have to work on strengthening our resources in our yeah. communities. And we also have to challenge these white spaces to be more hospitable so, and less hostile. So how do we do that? I mean, it, it has been forever in this country yeah. uh, that, that, that struggle to try to make yeah. uh, those spaces truly integrated and, yeah. and truly fair. What, 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 are we, what are we not doing? It's tough. I mean, 
you know, you fear for your children. Mm -hmm. You know, women can't go golf in the club that they belong to because they're golfing too slow. Mm -hmm. uh, black people can't sit while black in a mm -hmm. Starbucks two minutes later. Mm -hmm. They're calling the police. Tamir Rice can't play in the parks in Cleveland mm -hmm. because he's murdered literally two seconds after the police drive up and shoot right. him. They jump out of the car and just... I mean, my God. And it's an open carry state. Mm -hmm. So if he had a gun, why didn't you say, hey, what's the deal? And, right. You know, so the, the rules don't apply to us. We can sell loose cigarettes, CDs. <laughs> We're going to get killed. So it's not what we do. It's who we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the fear of blackness is a pervasive fear uh, that this society has not yet grappled with. And it pervades every moment, segment, and nook and cranny of this society. So the things we have to do is to continue to do what we've done best, create nurturing and loving environments in churches, in all black schools, in some black libraries. I yeah. mean, when I was coming up in Detroit, you know, the local library, or, or library as we called it, <laughs> was predominantly uh, black. Right. Uh, the Charles Wright Museum was in yeah. like a mobile yeah and right. we go there and check out books or check out history and mm -hmm. so on those things are extremely important the national you know the african-american museum yeah. in um in dc those are hallmarks and benchmarks and symbolic you know bearers of the meaning and significance of blackness but we got to create that stuff wherever we are yeah tell our kids that they are meaningful and loving that 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 they sh they are worthy of being loved that we must raise them up in a very spiritually significant and psychologically healthy way. Mm -hmm. And we gotta combat, we gotta go to bat for them at these schools. I mean, we can't avoid it. The thing is, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. warned about 10 days before he was murdered, before an assembly of rabbis mm -hmm. where Abraham Yasha Heschel introduced him as the moral leader of America. He said, we have to be careful lest we integrate ourselves out of power. Mm -hmm. The little stuff we do have control over, mm -hmm. if we go for the integration bait and switch, but we ain't already got power established and we give up what we got control over, we're going to integrate ourselves out of power. And in many ways, we've done that. We don't want to retain the old school segregation, imposed segregation. Yeah. Self-segregation is one thing. Forcible segregation is another. It's different. And yeah. we didn't have resources and the like. So we got to fight. Uh, for our own children in our own spaces and create loving and affirming spaces. And then we got to fight these spaces and we cannot let. I mean, Starbucks, as far as corporations go, is a pretty good corporate citizen, sure. right? Remember, they put those messages on those mm -hmm. cups and we mm -hmm. all, people, all oh, that's so goofy mm -hmm. and they tried to have conversation, but hey, that's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. That's better than not doing it. And that's better than, you know, in this age of Trump being hostile and indifferent uh, to black life, rolling back the resources that are meant to sustain us that are legitimately ours. Uh, Betty DeVos, a local Michigan woman, yeah. you know, reversing Obama, you know, uh, administration uh, practices that would strengthen the, 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 you know, strengthen the status sure. of We're young black students. Withdrawing civil rights and cases, right. Withdrawing civil rights yeah. cases. The Dep Department of Justice is at the behest of a man who rises every morning at 5.30 <laughs> a.m. to to tweet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the 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 <laughs> what is it the feces of his moral depravity <laughs> into a nation he has turned into a psychic commode. Yeah. I mean, so we know where the <laughs> whole country is beneath your nose and above your chin. Right. Right. So right. in that, so we got to be vigilant. We got to be vigorous. We got to fight back, and we got to hold ourselves accountable. And I think what's interesting, we're living through a black renaissance, whether yeah. we know it or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I want to ask you. You were mm -hmm. uh, one of the staunchest defenders of, mm -hmm. of President Obama mm -hmm. and his two terms uh, in office, oftentimes uh, against other African Americans who, mm -hmm. were, who were critical of him. Now that we're past the Obama administration, I'm really curious what you think uh, its major achievements were for African Americans, mm -hmm. besides the, the, the milestone, right? Sure. Uh, the first black president. What did we, what did we get from that? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I was cr I was critical of him, but in a principled fashion. Sure. I wasn't talking about his mama beating up on him, <laughs> you know, like some people we know were doing. I, I was never for that. Yeah. But I was for, you know, principled criticism that all presidents must have. Because sure. no president will do anything for you unless you make them. Right. That's right. just the nature of the presidency. Right. They, they ain't hooking you up because they want to hook you up. <laughs> like they remember, oh, yes, I no, No, you got to remind them. You got to go and say this is what we need. Right? But black people didn't do that. Yeah. We were giving them the pass. We were giving them the hookup from the beginning. 
And we would tell them, we don't want the commercial, we just want the product. Hmm. You ain't got to announce what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? But look, look at a couple things recently. And then I'll answer it specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at the Jack Johnson debate now. Uh -huh. Whether or not President Trump will uh, not commute, but pardon mm -hmm. posthumously uh, Jack Johnson. Well, that came before President Obama. Right. Now, the technical thing was, well, we don't, you know, give, you know, posthumous pardons. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Dude, the rule mm -hmm. <laughs> was already jacked up when they put the Mann Act on uh, um, Jack Johnson. Right. They used the law illegally, it's certainly immorally, and they applied it to him in a vicious and racist way. Right. So you have to go out of the box Right. Why address. do you need to follow the law to, to redress right. that? Right. Exactly. And the law was <clears> against <throat> him. The law was used against him. You have to write that wrong. Obama was timid. He often didn't show up for us. When you ask, now, it may sound harsh because I was his surrogate twice mm -hmm. because I thought he was far better than any other person running. I think he'll go down as one of the 10 greatest presidents in general because mm -hmm. I don't know why white folk were mad. Right. He, he hooked y'all up big time. <laughs> Your economy, Everything gay better, marriage. Right? You know, <laughs> some of the housing, y'all, it was boom time. He saved the automobile industry. Right. Black folk, not so much. Yeah. When he came here to take a deserved victory lap in Detroit, mm -hmm. he didn't stop up in Flint. Right. Bruh, Flint is 60 miles, 70 miles up the road. Right. right. And they're facing a crisis. So he was loath and hesitant to be pigeonholed as the black president, sure. to be ghettoized. I yeah. get that. But what does that leave? Where does that leave us? We are still black, right? You know, so when when he would often say, "I'm not the president of Black America," went, really? <laughs> Thought you were the head of the NAACP? <laughs> Thought you had succeeded, Window Anthony? <laughs> right. We didn't know, right? In Detroit, one of the greatest chapters. All right. We didn't know that you were the president. Of, the, of course, we did. Sure. But you didn't tell Jewish people, you know, I'm not the Jewish president. You didn't tell Latinos, I'm not the Latino president. You didn't tell it. Arab, Asian, you didn't say, but why are you pointing us out? And if we're not any different, yeah. why are you making us different? Right. And if our expectations are that you will deal with us, that's anybody. Environmentalists hit him hard. Mm -hmm. L liberals hit him hard. Mm -hmm. They were disappointed. <clears throat> the many constituencies demanded something of him because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So really, when you, when you look at it and, and not giving uh, Trump any grace, mm -hmm. Um, maybe black unemployment is so low now because of Obama era policies, yes. but he didn't direct, uh, directly address them. And when people asked, can you do something specific? Can you target? No, I don't believe in targeting. I believe in universal uh, application mm -hmm. of public policy. Right. I had an argument with him in the East Room, in, 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 in the East Room, Rockefeller Room, in, in the White House, mm -hmm. 10 of us, Negro leaders. And I said, sir, when you go to the emergency ward, you don't get medicine. You know, if you got a hangnail, you get aspirin. If you got diabetes, you get insulin. And if you got cancer, you get chemotherapy. Right, it needs to be specific. Public policies, right. like medicines, yeah. must be targeted toward the ills they are meant to relieve. Yeah. And so his, his, his disinclination, his fatal hesitations and faints, and hence, really uh, led to a tragic denial of real opportunity for black people in this administration. And ironically enough, I'm still a Baptist preacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my Bible tells me if you kick out a demon and you don't put nothing in the demon's place, seven worse will come into the, the house. Will come in, right? Yeah. And do it. And Obama, see, here's the thing. You don't want to talk about race? Oh, in America, we're going to talk about race. You may not talk about race, but somebody's going to talk but about it. Oh, here's will. a guy named Donald Trump. Yeah. Nonstop. Do you, do you, Nonstop talking about do race. You so it was see, unfortunate. Do you see... Trump as uh, a reaction oh, to yeah. sure. uh, Obama, and 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 I guess the second, the sort of follow up to that is, uh, what were the things that Obama might have done mm -hmm. that might have mitigated that right. that reaction? Well, you know, let's be fair to him. We don't know how much he could have done to mitigate it, but there are some things he might have done yeah. since he is an incrementalist. Right. There's some things he might have incrementally done. Uh, to make a difference. But yeah, he's, this, this is what, you know, Trump is what white America preferred, and I'm saying in general, we're sure, talking about all white sure. people, but most white people never voted for Obama. Right. Right. People right, tend to forget right. that. It was yes. a coalition. African American people in high percentages, enough white people voted for him also yeah. to put him over. But this is what they want instead of the black man. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what you want. <laughs> A highly incompetent, mm -hmm. proud to be unmolested by enlightenment, <laughs> untrammelled by knowledge, untouched by serious inter, you yeah. know, insight. Yeah. This is the guy you want, who, who you, you wanted him more than Hillary, you mm -hmm. wanted him more than the black guy, you wanted him more than the woman. Yeah. Oh, she's untrustworthy. Uh, she's not likable. She ain't trying to be your girlfriend. <laughs> and <clears throat> is she less likely 
than this dude. Yeah, right. And you know what was said about she had more knowledge in her little pinky finger than this dude had in his entire body. And the vicious sexism mm -hmm. against her was n was mostly unremarked yeah, upon. Right. The the racism against Obama was acknowledged, but not so much the sexism against her. Uh, but beyond that, yeah. So the, the 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 resentment of Obama, the reaction against Obama was certainly to put. Trump in office. What, uh, what might have Obama done? I don't know. Talk. <laughs> like use one of your greatest gifts. Yeah. It's like having Isaiah Thomas as president, but he can't talk basketball. <laughs> Magic right. Johnson is what are you here Secretary for, right? of State, right? <laughs> but you can't discuss, discuss you know, passes. You know, Allen Iverson, but you can't talk about crossover. Sorry, I'm on basketball. <clears throat> Serena Williams, but you it's can't talk about a smasher. Right? <laughs> you know, so it was unfortunate and yeah. tragic. One of the reasons he became president is the very reason that he was disappointing to us, right? right? Yeah. That as a black man, he ain't going to push white folk too much, not going to make them too uncomfortable. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you got, you, you're doing a disservice to white brothers and sisters, too. I don't mean come out, Rafiki Wakumba, you know, and shouting in some Swahili <laughs> right. and throwing down the darts on right. them. You know, maybe the last day you could have done that, you know, or paint the White House red, black, and green, but you did <laughs> it the rainbow colors the door, right? on the way out the door. Deuces. I got something for you. Like my man Pac said, I'm done. Right. I didn't expect that. But uh, it might have been the case that he would uh, encourage white Americans to think seriously about race. Look yeah. at what he did after Trayvon. Right. First, he was like, the court system has spoken, that's yeah. the law. Right. We're like, come on, bro, stop, stop, stop playing. And then he says that if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Right, I thought right. that was one of the most... Uh, Affirming, uh, empathetic yeah. things, but... Yeah, but, but that, the they, thing. they jumped all over him for that. But, they, but see, here's the thing about black people. They jumped all over him for everything. <laughs> It ain't like, oh, they jumped on him for a tan suit. Yeah, right. They jumped on him for breathing. Yeah. Why are you breathing today, Obama? <laughs> right? They jumped on him on every issue. Why is it that race is the only issue about which we're so sensitive yeah. that they, they talked about him when he was talking about the, the Iran deal, mm -hmm. when he talked about the red line drawn in the sand with Syria. Mm -hmm. They jumped on him when he was talking about going to school to deliver lessons to kids. Yeah. In other words, everything he did was controversial. So why back up on our interests? And we right. happen to be American citizens. I don't yeah. know if the last time he checked, you may not be the president of black America, but you're the president of black Americans. Right. That's we, right. We, we ain't in no other country here, bro. Right. And we have been more committed to this country than anybody. You know, isn't it interesting that <clears throat> many white people support the Confederate flag, even here in Michigan, mm -hmm. with its racist, you know, hinterlands mm -hmm. juxtaposed to the, this enclave of blackness in, in uh, Detroit? I mean, so you're celebrating a flag that is really the emblem of secession, which um, is tyranny yeah. and disloyalty. Right. That's the flag being embraced. Right. It's in, they were infidels. Yeah. I mean, straight up infidels. And yet we have been loyal to this nation. And it's, it's, it's tough. Now, let's, let's admit it. It is hard to talk race with white brothers and sisters. I'm sure they're in a tough position. Geez, I don't know what to say. If I say something, I'm not going to sound like Jiminy Cricket. I'm going to sound like a racist. I'll just keep my damn mouth shut. Mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. So we got to, we can't pounce on them and stuff, but we got to say, but you got to talk up now. You got to engage. The stuff you say behind our backs, maybe say a little bit of that more to our face. Right. If you don't, but but be honest about it. Your, your cousin Jethro, your uncle Bobo, <laughs> you know what they're saying. Yeah. You mad at affirmative action. You know these these illiterate white people who have gotten jobs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because and illiterate black people who have not who don't and, you know and and, and 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 if affirmative action in the white mindset means you getting some stuff you don't deserve which is not what the meaning of affirmative action is of course not but if that's the case don't ever complain again with with this man as president right this is the most manifestly patently incompetent <laughs> human being yeah. ever to occupy the presidency of the United States of America. We got a, we got to issue a letter of apology to George Bush. <laughs> Dear George, we thought you were the you've dumbest been, guy ever. <laughs> oh my God, you look like a Mensa Society member. <laughs> you know, even though he did some horrible stuff, and now in through nostalgia and its hazes, we think uh, George Bush didn't, but he did awful stuff. But yeah. this is just how bad he is. So yeah, Obama might have spoken up. He might have done targeted policies. You ain't gonna announce it again. Just yeah. do it as a matter of public policy. And then thirdly, he didn't have to attack black people the way he did.
Yeah, that, that was disappointing. Right? It was extremely disappointing, to say the least, sir. Yeah. You're a very articulate, <laughs> handsome young man, but let's just, it, was, it was crazy. It was, it was crazy. Cray -cray. <laughs> why, why are you jumping on black people? Like, yeah. if you can't, here's the rule when you got many kids. Mm -hmm. If you can't do it to one, don't do it to none. <laughs> right. Now, you love all your kids equally. You might treat them differently based upon where they are. But the interesting thing is then, but you have to love them all mm -hmm. and be responsible mm -hmm. for them. So Obama was willing to throw off on us to take us to the woodshed, but not right. represent us. But not, not st stand up and now say. You can't stand yeah, up for but, us. Yeah. And isn't it interesting? When you look at recent studies about the police, it is true that the police have a sense of resentment against black people. Sure. It is very We're specific and targeted. Yeah. You saw that? So what's interesting, they couldn't get to Obama, so they started killing us more in the streets. So we became his proxy and he became our symbol yeah. of yeah. progress. And yet the very symbol of our progress couldn't embrace us totally. Right. It's like, you ever liked a girl a little bit more than she liked you. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's never happened to you. Right. Me either. <laughs> sure. Right. So you like the girl a little bit more, and then you gonna do stuff for her, and you know, and it's hard unless you Jesus to not abuse somebody, right? right. You, you, that's just the nature of the game. You go like, I don't really want to take advantage of you, but you got 15 extra dollars. All right. I ain't gonna check for you, but what you doing this weekend? If you got some money, take us to the movies. Right. <laughs> so, but that's what Black America did. What. With, with, with Obama. Uh, now they think Kanye is in a, a sunken place because Kanye <laughs> is now talking about Trump. Let me tell you something about Kanye without defending him totally. <laughs> Obama dogged Kanye yeah. in an unprincipled fashion. Like, yeah. what a jackass. Why? Because mm -hmm. he had the, the courage you didn't have? Because he went up on stage and said, it's not about Taylor Swift, she's mm -hmm. a genius. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift has been a prodigy since she's 15 <laughs> writing songs. Amazing. But it was bigger than her. Right. It was about the fact that black artists were not getting their just due. And still don't. Of, uh, no disrespect to my man 24 Karat Go. Yeah. You know, and I love him, Bruno Mars, but <laughs> bruh, over Kendrick, who won a poser, Kendrick, or yeah. Jay Z on 444. Mm. So the, the reality is that Kanye was saying black folk don't get what they deserve and snatched the mic. Because you have been manifestly uncourageous, Obama, don't be mad at somebody who can stand up, but when he did that to him publicly, yeah. it was a hurt piece, as they say, yeah. it was very hurtful. Yeah. And I think it pushed him into you know, where he is now. And people say, well, is he in a sunken place? No, black people are in a sunken place when they can't, in a principled fashion, acknowledge. Obama could have pardoned Jack Johnson. Yeah. Obama might have met with the Congressional Black Caucus, right, uh, before he did. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump met with them in 60 days. Yes. Obama yes. took like 600 days. Did it in a clumsy days. way, but he did it. <laughs> he did it, but I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you hook me up with yeah, them? Right. Uh, April don't you know, them, you know where right. they are? Uh, I don't know. I just don't know them. <laughs> right. uh, but but Obama took six hundred and some days yeah. to meet yeah. with them. So let's let's not drink the coffee, the Kool Aid, and talk yeah. about who's in the sunken place with with a president who was enormously important, but he had real flaws. He's like the Shaquille O'Neal of presidents, right? <laughs> Shaquille was a dominant figure, right? But he couldn't shoot free throws. Right. That's why they came up with the hack of shack. Right. Right. So Obama's a great president, but don't say he did a lot for black people now. That's that's that you lying. Yeah. That's like saying Shaq was a great free throw shooter. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. He's still great. Right. But that wasn't his forte. Obama's did. forte was not helping black people and stop lying about it. And in fact, he did some things that were deeply problematic, attacking us verbally, mm -hmm. um, signifying on us, using his bully, bull, bully pulpit at Morehouse College to assault young black men. You wouldn't think he was addressing a graduating class of men yeah. from prison. Right. You know, right. not that they don't these deserve are, to these be These are true. high achievers and- He they, says, they're gonna give me about, thing you don't deserve. Yeah. Brother, the only person getting yeah. a, a award they didn't deserve that day and a degree, degree that they didn't earn was you. <laughs> was you he, got an honorary, honorary degree. Right. They earned theirs. Right. They were four years, you just showing up talking. Right. I, I know, I've been, I got many honorary degrees. <laughs> I ain't done nothing. <laughs> I done wrote some books, ran my <laughs> mouth, got a little fame, that's yeah. all. Right. So the reality yeah. is, is that it's extremely difficult for black people to do that, but maybe we should be more empathetic to white people. If, if it's hard for us to criticize Barack Obama, maybe we ought to be empathetic to why they can't, <laughs> why they can't deal with Trump, but I don't thing, know. Right, not just Trump, but I mean, in general, <laughs> although Trump is, look, any white, even white people are going, oh my God, he's like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But see, they think it's Trump as opposed to whiteness. Many white people think it's, he's an exception. No, he's an extension. Yeah. This is, tr Donald Trump is the manifestation of the warning black people have been given for the last 300 years about what whiteness would do when it's unchecked, unchallenged, yeah. and uncorralled. Right. This is what, this is what, it this looks is like. what he manifests. Yeah. Okay, Michael Eric Dyson.
as always. Can we have another half hour? I was going to say, Can we, we need like another? all day. I mean, let's just change <laughs> suits right now and go do another interview. <laughs> That's right. And pretend it's another day. The camera Again. people don't ever change. They look good already. <laughs> That's right. right. It's always great to, to talk with you, uh, and thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it.